Hey everyone, today I need to show you something crazy. I actually found a way to reverse the arrow of time. You know, kind of like in the movie Tenet, you gotta see this. So somehow this water is moving in slow motion, but I'm moving in regular motion. So not only can we have it move in slow motion, but we can also have it move in reverse motion. Three, two, one. So now it's moving in reverse motion while I'm still moving in regular motion. That is weird. So it's going up into the tube now. But I can pour the water out of the cup and it goes down. So let me grab a bowl full of water and you can actually watch it suck the water out of the bowl. So weird. Look at it suck the water right up. Let's drink this water in slow motion. Now it's completely frozen. So what we just saw here appeared to be water that was able to reverse entropy, reverse its own arrow of time to move backwards through time, while I was still moving forward through time regularly. Entropy is most often described as disorder, but that's kind of a bad description of entropy. That's not what entropy is at all. And the reason it's not is because disorder is just based on somebody defining what order is. For example, let's say I have this deck of cards here. You can see that these are very ordered, but that's just because usually when you play cards, you want all the cards face the right direction so you can see them. So there's some predefined reason why you say something is ordered. Most people would say that this stack of cards has low entropy, but when I do this, it has high entropy. Oh man. So you can see all my cards spread around my garage here. So some people would say that this is now disordered. But who's to say that this is disordered? To me, I could actually say, I wanted each of these cards exactly stacked this way. I wanted a queen right there, two cards facing exactly like that, some right there. Oh yeah, and the joker exactly right there, perfect. So if I define order in a different way, who's to say these aren't more ordered? But intuitively, you know that this mess of cards is different than when they're in a perfect stack like that. So what's the thing that's different? It's not that they're more or less ordered. As I said, order is just a human construct that we have based on some preference. But the difference between a stack of cards in my hand and a stack of cards that's spread all over the floor is the area or volume in which those cards take up. What I mean is that when they're in my hand like this, there's a lower amount of possible positions they could be in to fit into this small of volume. So when you throw the cards in the air, there's a lot more ways in which that can happen. The two could have landed right here, and it could have landed like this, or like this, and like this, and like this, or like this, or like this. And the joker could have landed on top of it, or like this. But when I'm holding them in my hand, there's not very many ways in which I can hold them in my hand. So the definition of entropy is not disorder, but it's the number of ways in which something can happen. So when there are a lot of ways in which something can happen, we say that it has higher entropy. And when there are less ways in which something can happen, we say it has lower entropy. So whenever you increase a volume of something, there are more states that those particles that are within that volume can be in. And so that's increasing its entropy. So if you have a gas at one volume and that same amount of gas in a different volume, the larger volume has more possible microstates that that gas can be in. And so it has a larger entropy than that smaller volume. Now this is important because our universe is constantly expanding. It's constantly getting bigger. And because of that, that means that our entropy is always increasing in the universe. You can't reverse entropy. And that's what the second law of thermodynamics is. It says that the entropy of the universe is always increasing. So the universe is always getting more and more possible states that all of the particles in the universe can be in. So now we get back to the original question. What if we had some sort of magic machine that could reverse the entropy of a specific person in the universe? What would it look like? So we know how our arrow of time works, but let's say there were an alternate universe in which the arrow of time wasn't going towards increasing entropy, but it was going towards decreasing entropy. Well, it would mean that you start out dead and then you become alive. You get younger and younger and younger and eventually you get born. So your past is when you're older and your future is when you're younger. 
But here's the thing, in that alternate universe that has a reverse arrow of time, they would be looking at our universe and they'd say, whoa, those people have a reverse arrow of time. It's really weird. They are born young and they die old. So for each of these alternate universes, both of them would be seeing the other one as completely foreign and not knowing how anything could function with the arrow of time reversed. So what would happen if both of these universes were to interact? Well, surprisingly, nothing would appear any different. That's because as soon as you get reversed, now everything that was in the past is now your future and everything in the future is now your past. So that means that you would instantly remember everything in your future and then everything in your past you wouldn't know anything about. But not only that, everything biologically would function different as well meaning you'd breathe backwards, you'd walk backwards, you, everything would function exactly backwards, you'd even think backwards. And so that means that literally everything is happening backwards for you, and so there'd be no way of knowing that you're even going backwards. So it's not like you could go through the machine and change anything in your past, because the past is unknown to you now. You don't know anything about it. You have to go backwards through time and experience it. And because of continuity, you would just continue back through time, making the same mistakes that you made up to the point that you got to the time reverse machine. So the key point of this is because when you change the direction of entropy, your arrow of time also changes, it means that no matter what, you would always feel like everything's exactly normal. And everyone around you interacting with you would feel like everything's happening exactly normal. So what does this mean for my experiment? Well, it means that I didn't actually reverse the arrow of time for my water here. What I did is just vibrate some water coming out of the tube and match that to the frame rate of my camera. So if we're, with a frame rate of 30 frames per second, so all my speaker's doing here is vibrating this water coming out and I can match the frequency of that vibration to my frame rate so that at every frame, I'm catching the water at the same spot. And to make the water go in slow motion, I just go a little bit above 30 hertz. And to make it go in reverse, I just go a little bit below 30 hertz. So it's not quite catching the water in the same spot each time. So if I don't quite match the frame rate, then each additional frame is gonna be a little bit off the previous one. So you can actually get it to appear like it's moving in slow motion. Look how weird this looks. Look at it just falling in slow motion. <laughs> the drop, look at, it, look at that one just falling through the air. So slow, but I can touch it. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And you can also hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest video and turn on your YouTube notifications to get that bell. And check out theactionlab.com if you haven't seen it yet. You can get the Action Lab experiment boxes and my experiment book as well. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.